I have a theory that people will fall in line and resort back to their normal instincts or their fondest memories when dealing with strife or having to deal with tough, tough or difficult situations. This theory really helps people get along with their day to day activities. For example, Donald Trump is being called a racist by multiple people for his racist actions. So instead of him owning them or even finding ways to deflect them, he finds ways to prove that he isn't racist by incorporating the friends of rich black people and rich pastors who are black to defend him because that isn't racist at all. Finding your only black friends who aren't your friends, but people you pay to pretend such as Kanye West, ASAP Rocky, and the assortment of these pastors. My theory is that when you face a difficult situation and you're familiar with the situation, you'll revert back to the thing that'll make you feel safe in that situation. It is called the Life is like a hurricane Did you woo? Did you woo? In all seriousness, all right, for all you guys that don't know, I'm going to recap this because I didn't want to talk about this story. I don't really care about this story, but it's so relevant about how manipulation in the media cycle works. It is a poignant example of how they distract us with the shiny object in the corner. ASAP Rocky went to Sweden or Poland or one of these fucking countries that have all white people. And he is notorious. Like, let's talk about ASAP Rocky first. One, I have six songs of his on my iPod right now. Um, last time I listened to one of his songs were in 2014. ASAP Rocky is an individual who has said in public he doesn't care about Black Lives Matter because he lives in the rich neighborhoods. So he doesn't worry about poor neighborhood issues. So right off the bat, Everyone on the black community side should be like, yeah, fuck ASAP Rocky. And that is still my sentiment till today. Like ASAP Rocky is the venom coursing through the veins of our damaged culture and youth. His inability to care about anything other than his own perception of life and how it pertains to what his image is perceived is obnoxious. It's detest is it's the worst. It's the taste you get after drinking purple medicine. It is a mask. It is just a masking lady. Like I can't take it. It makes my skin crawl. But besides the fact that he's annoying and I don't like him, he's done things that just don't make him acceptable in the grand scheme of his own people. He, when was the last time he was in tour in America? When was the last time he did all these great things? He he is. He isn't as relevant as he used to be. So he does things to prove that he is. And here's the hardcore fact. If you're making more than $100,000 in any form of business, whether it is selling crime or crime related or professional, you can't be a gangster anymore. You're a business person. You have to allocate your funds appropriately. ASAP Rocky claims to be a thug and a gangster and he's hood. You have a financial advisor. You have a publicist. You have a manager. You are a businessman pretending to be tough. You are not tough. You walk around with 10 people in your entourage designed to protect you because you can't fight your own battles. And we know that to be true. You've taken some L's. But besides the fact that he is a multi-million dollar rap artist, he still wants to put on this front like we don't know you're fronting. He goes to this country he walks around freely with his group of people and he's notorious. This isn't the first time he's done this. Like he doesn't like he he doesn't like people taking pictures of him. He doesn't like t uh, interacting with his his fans. He doesn't he feels like he shouldn't be approached in public. But when you're a public figure, that's what happens. You get approached in public, you idiot. Um but he's done this in the past. But he also has security guards, security guards bigger than me. 
So there's no reason for ASAP Rocky to ever physically get into an altercation and his security team should be well, well aware of his antics and have contingency plans designed to make sure that this idiot doesn't have to get himself involved because that idiot is your paycheck and if he's in jail, you do not get paid. Do you see the circle of life here? But ASAP Rocky refuses to not be acknowledged in his toughness so he does weird shit like Deny people the ability to get to know him, his fans, which is absolutely normal. I'll give him that. He, he has the right to ignore these people. But you can't say you don't want public attention, then go walking around in public in an all-white country with 10 big black guys surrounding you. It's just not going to make your ability to hide a little bit better. Like You're a multimillionaire. You could have rented out some VIP condo and had selected people you want in your presence Selected. You could have been smoking all your weeds, puffing your smoke, sipping your wines, but you refuse to. You want to be seen as tough. So when a group of Asian people, which is weird, but I guess it's not written that that was racist of me. <laughs> you got to be able to call out your own racism. Um, two Asian men came up to him, took pictures of him from a distance. ASAP Rocky sent his goons to go break their camera and they followed them. These two Asian men followed this group. Antag and it was both on both sides antagonizing really because I saw the video it's like 30 minutes long I, I'll never get that 30 minutes back and they were antagonizing one another to the extent where the two four bodyguards started beating up the two Asian men and that's when ASAP Rocky joined in on the fun and that's the part that baffles me it's like bro not only were they getting a town stomped in a, a different, in a, they were getting a town stomped in a country where Atlanta doesn't exist, and you join in, and it, you don't join in because you're tough, you join in because you're a pussy, you're weak. Like at that point, you, a tough guy would have helped them up or fought in their defense. You're not a tough guy, man. Like I, these rappers, they're crazy, crazy to me. They talk about how tough they are. They need guns to do it. But also white supremacists. There is a correlation there. Weak men need guns. And they always claim that they're tough. But they're not. Without their guns, they're nothing. It's like maddening how the correlation is to that. But um, ASAP Rocky gets arrested. All right. And you have to remember, like, in the, in the recent past, in the last six to eight months, Jay-Z has been doing a lot of things in the black community, especially like for rappers, helping rappers pay off their tax funds, like their, the money they owe in IRS, helping uh, Meek Mills get his career back together. Like, it, But, you know, he ignored this situation because it's, it's, he didn't feel it was relevant. And this is a show. This isn't ASAP Rocky trying to getting a tough break. This is him showing his character. So ASAP Rocky's management reaches out to Kanye West. You know that black guy that we don't we traded for um any white person, any ally at this point. <laughs> like he reaches out to Donald Trump and this is coming this happens all within the cycle of when Donald Trump has started attacking the four congresswomen of color, um Ilan Omar, uh AOC and the two other ladies, I forget them. The one lady that looks like Jennifer Hudson. And um, the one lady, the Hispanic lady, I believe. Uh, I don't know. The, I, call them the, I call them the radical four. And it's just, I love them to death. Um, he attacks them. And he, he doesn't, and, let, let's, and, I'll, and I'll put in my into, I'll put my little two cents in on this too. He, but his statement, his statement is it direct? He didn't say anything racial. He didn't say anything. His None of his words were racial. His statement was racially charged. It is something that he would only say to minorities because there are white, liberal, radical left people who are in politics who say things of the same nature and aptitude that these four lovely con congresswomen have. And he has never responded with go back to your country. That has never been a statement for him. In fact, it is almost directly directed towards people of color. Then fast forward a few more weeks, he makes fun of Cummings, who was alive long enough to be there when civil rights weren't 
at the status that they are right now. My man knows, like, he knows slavery. Like, he knows people who were slaves. So anything you say to him with a derogatory or a negative connotation is automatically going to be perceived as racist. He is a racist. That's a fact. We don't have to keep talking about that. We need to start talking about how that can directly affect him. Oh, there's actually laws that say that the president cannot be charged for being racist. And if Donald Trump has taught us anything, he has taught us that there needs to be a breakdown of what the power and abilities that the president has and how he can use them. The fact that a, a sitting president can't be indicted by a special counsel is is blasphemy. It it is scary to think about because his sentiments and his statements such as he could go out and shoot someone on Fifth Street in broad daylight and get away with it reigns true now. And if he thinks he can do that, his followers think so too. Exhibit A and Exhibit B. Respectively, El Paso, Ohio. Um, Kanye West gets into contact with him and he tweets about this. And Donald Trump ha- likes to say things like, how can I, I'm the least racist person ever. That is so, that is, that in itself, that is the equivalent of saying I'm not racist because I have a black friend and that black friend is my driver. I know someone like that. Donald Trump is racist and there's nothing, there's, you can't argue that anymore. Like he doesn't even, he, but he doesn't think he's racist because he doesn't understand what racism is. Like he just says to himself, do you have money? Are you socially equipped? Like he, he just says, oh, you're black and you're poor. You're poor because you're black. Like those are correlating things to him. And whenever he sees an anomaly such as Kanye West, he says, oh, but why are you black? He does. He doesn't let that register to him. So Kanye West makes a call. Donald Trump oversteps his boundary by calling the 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 president or the ruler of Sweden or whoever the fuck's in charge. And kudos to him for saying that he's not going to interject or interfere with the with the judicial process in Sweden. Good for him. ASAP Rocky was looking at facing seven years in jail, and I wanted him to suffer every last fucking day of those seven years. I wanted him to be punished for his crimes because you're black. We got it tough enough as it is already. Uh, we don't need the rich black people acting a fucking fool. You're making it harder for me to defend you. ASAP Rocky did, committed a crime. You must do the time. I'm not a person who's politically correct to the extent that I don't realize that crimes need to be acknowledged. People who try and equivocate, oh, white people rape, black people rape, we shouldn't let, we should we should hold these people to worry about yourself. Worry about your rapists, worry about your murderers, worry about your lawbreakers. Because, like, you're the only one that cares. And finally, after this whole ordeal and this whole dilemma, he gets out. And it just adds another cap to President Trump's hat, just adds another feather to his cap, because he at this point in time, he now has people, black people showing like uh, what's the name of it? Breitbart went up to Infowars, went up to the poorest districts in Baltimore and found poor black people to say that, oh, we haven't had anything done for them without any context, with any background like there's so much to be talked about or comparing the audio log of Bernie Sanders talking about how this place looks like a third world country. At least he's doing something to help with context. He's describing the things that he saw in an effort to make things better. This isn't him attacking them and not sending aid to them. This isn't him attacking them for being them. This is him showing the world what it felt like. There's a difference. And just pushing past the situation, you've now given him ammo because you know, and I'm and I'm professing it right now, this is gonna happen. In the next three to four days, ASAP Rock is gonna get back to America and he's gonna be wearing a Make America Great hat, or he's gonna say something to encourage or endorse Donald Trump. It's part of the scheme. All of Donald Trump's black friends are paid to be there. Name one black person that isn't affiliated with Donald Trump that is affiliated with Donald Trump, that doesn't have something to gain. I'll wait. The pastors that went to go see him 
all get tax breaks and they all have lucrative business investments in, within his company and organization. Uh, silk and dime or dime and silk idiot and witch nut they're paid on his payroll all of his advisors who are black are on his payroll so there's no op there like name someone name a black person that what tiger woods oh yeah guess who pays all that money to have his his golf co course remat redone and established and put into the thing it's all for naught. it's like there's nothing good about him and he's now giving himself he says weird stats like i am the president that has the lowest black unemployment ratio you know before 2019 obama was that person and before obama it was clint uh, george w before george w was clinton like you can't brag about something that's always going to progressively get better whether you're in office or not Next, the next president will have the best unemployment numbers as well. It is a pat like he claims things that aren't that no normal person would s pat themselves on the back, but he needs that validation. He can't live without it. He needs to be reminded. A group of like think about this. My man's had a group of black people go into a room and tell him, "You're not racist." Ignore these other black people calling you racist, and he came back and said, "I am the least racist person in America, in the world." He, he thinks, and, and this is the scary part because his perception becomes reality. He thinks he's the least racist black person in the world. That means Donald Trump, that means Donald Trump looks at other black people and thinks, you're more racist than I am. Donald Trump thinks he's least racist than I am.